blast from the past, today we're talking about Iran. Oh, yikes, they're in the news again? Now Iran's nuclear program has sort of morphed into the political equivalent of leaving a stove on high and then forgetting about it. What's that smell? Well, Biden's recent Middle East trip with every person he spent an entire election cycle talking smack about is cranking that Iranian nuclear situation up to an 11. First, a little background. Years ago, Iran was working on a nuclear weapon and the world came together to say, yeah, that really does not look like a good situation. Everyone from Russia and China to America and Europe came together to put the kibosh on a nuclear Iran. Looming sanctions from the world got Iran to surrender their nuclear programs in record time. Iran more specifically surrendered their nuclear materials to Russia, allowed inspection of their nuclear development sites, and promised not to enrich uranium to certain nuclear levels for a set amount of time. Now, there were two large criticisms of this deal. First, it had those expiration dates. We're not going to accept a nuclear Iran uh, until 2025. Let's just hope we have a really good president that year. The other problem was that this was specifically a nuclear deal. Iran, you can't build a nuclear bomb. Missiles, militias, and terrorism? We'll overlook that for a bit. But, but I can't emphasize this enough, don't build a nuclear weapon. It held for a while, but then in 2018 Trump left the nuclear deal, citing all sorts of non-nuclear actions that Iran was doing around the world. Now, while Iran wasn't violating the deal itself, they were violating, as Trump said, the spirit of the deal. Basically, hey Iran, we say you couldn't stab the guy and you went at him and punched him in the crotch. I'm gonna do a little bit of legal rounding up on this one. Now, unfortunately for Iran, it was a bit of a, I'm the president, if you don't like what I'm doing, do bad, I'm gonna pull out of the deal. It wasn't really an appeals process there. Now this is where things really started to get off the rails. Trump confidently stormed out of the Iran deal and declared to the world, I'm leaving, who's with me? To which the rest of the world looked at each other and said, yeah, we're just gonna hang out here for a little bit longer. Europe, China, and Russia stayed in the agreement and tried to keep the thing alive, while America was outside of the agreement just lobbing everything they could at the deal. Blocking payments, sanctioning everything we could get our hands on, it was not a good situation. Basically Europe was the parents saying, alright, I know dad sent you to bed without dinner, but I whipped up a little something that I'm going to slide under your door. Don't tell dad, just let this hold you over until he has his 2020 election. Now this strategy of trying to hold out till 2020 didn't fully pan out. Because Iran started breaching the nuclear agreement a year later several times in 2019 and then escalating those violations into 2020 and onwards. Basically from their perspective, you guys wrecked our economy the sole purpose we signed onto that deal in the first place. So why should we be abiding by it today? Now by the time Biden was in office, the only people in compliance with the Iran deal were pretty much Europe. Talks were reopened under Biden and talk they did, two years of talks. Now there were a few key sticking points that kept coming up and continue to come up today. First, and this probably won't surprise you very much. But Iran doesn't really trust us as much as they did last time. You see, in the corner of their mind, they're always thinking, what if America elects a future president that just sort of decides to YOLO out of an agreement and starts sanctioning Iran unilaterally? Remember, last time they were in compliance with the deal when Trump left, just not with the spirit of the deal. Now they want to make sure that they're held to the terms of the deal itself as opposed to some sort of constructed mythos surrounding the deal at large. Problem is, if you want to get that locked in deal, well you're going to need to get congress involved and yeah, as soon as you loop in congress on doing anything, the promise of anything getting done goes out the window. Trump was able to leave the previous Iran deal so easily, most specifically because America had committed to it largely as a glorified, hey you can trust us, handshake. 
the White House defined the original Iran deal as a non-binding agreement, there's that commitment for you, rather than a treaty, which the constitution requires senate advice and consent on. Now a new handshake, well that's looking quite a bit shakier, because Iran wants something a bit more official. Put a ring on it. Now, unfortunately, our constitution requires a two-thirds Senate majority to approve a treaty, so that is not going to happen. And now this brings us to the second sticking point. America's commitment in the Iran deal is a lot easier to flip back and forth on than Iran's commitments. You see, with America, you could in theory say, alright, we're going to sanction everything Iran produces and then turn around the next day and have a complete 180 and say, all right, sanctions are off. Never mind that crazy thing I did yesterday. With Iran, on the other hand, well, they have a bunch of enriched uranium that, once they turn it over to another country, you can't really unflip that switch again if something goes wrong. Can't suddenly decide to nope your way back into possession of enriched uranium or centrifuges. Now, because of this, Iran is saying, oh, 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 no way are we going to do that again and hand over anything until we see real action taking place in America. America's saying, whoa, ho, ho, we're not going to give you any sanctions relief until you actually try to take actions to get back into compliance with the Iran deal. And Europe is saying, whoa, 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 let's just coordinate and lower our guns all at the same time. At this point though, no real action has been taken by anyone, in fact we're still headed in the wrong direction. So we're still banging our heads against the walls in that scenario. And lastly, there's this strange issue of Trump adding the Iranian Revolutionary Guard to the terrorist group list. Iran, well they obviously wanted off that list. If I'm going to be honest about this one though, kind of feels like more of a political and emotional issue as opposed to a structural challenge, so I'm not going to spend much time fixating on it. But Iran certainly is. Now Biden's solution to that last issue seems to be, let's talk about it a bit more. If I say maybe enough times, then you might stop bringing it up. So what's going on with Biden's Middle East trip? Well, if you were hoping to see an Iran deal, this is certainly a step very much in the wrong direction. There are three main relationships on focus with this trip. America's relationship with Israel and Saudi Arabia, America's relationship with Iran, and Iran's relationship with Russia. Oh yeah, Russia's dipping their toe into this already very complicated relationship. So first, let's talk about America's lunch table. One thing to know about our Middle East BFFs is that they all do not like Iran at all. America is currently the meat in the middle of an Israel-Saudi Arabia sandwich. We're trying to get some of our anti-Iranian friends to form defense treaties, specifically between Israel and Saudi Arabia and then maybe bring in some of the other Arab nations. A bunch of anti-Iran defense treaties is not the best omen for a successful Iran deal negotiation. We want a peaceful negotiation, but if that doesn't work, me and all my friends are getting ready to obliterate you. Now, This peace war contrast is most apparent in some very awkward moments that Biden had with Israel recently. You see, America and Biden are still in the, we can negotiate with Iran. Let's get two whoops for diplomacy. While Israel is going full, the best defense is a good offense. Let's get two whoops for failing diplomacy. We're not going to let Iran get a nuclear weapon and we'll use force if necessary. Now, At the end of that Israel trip, Biden stated that America would be willing to use force as a last resort in preventing Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. Not sure what that means, but here's hoping we don't find out. Now, as you can imagine, all of this is making Iranian relations pretty awkward right now. Which brings us perfectly to our next relationship, America and Iran. Who says you can't negotiate from behind circled wagons? Now, currently, there's a bit of an Iraq level of ambiguity surrounding Iran's nuclear program. A few months ago, Iran stopped letting nuclear inspectors into their enrichment facilities and nuclear research sites. So we're largely searching for answers in the dark right now as to how they're progressing. 
Recently though, Secretary of State Blinken has come out to say, with their current nuclear stockpiles and technology, if they really put their heart into it, you know like turned on Rocky 2 and got all pumped up, they could build a nuclear weapon in a matter of weeks. That was reported just over a month ago, so oh no. Now Iran hasn't developed that nuke yet, but mainly because they're playing a game of nuclear chicken with the west. Ideally, they get their sanctions relief in a new nuclear deal, but they're going to leverage the massive threat of developing nuclear weapons as much as they possibly can in order to achieve that final goal of sanctions relief. Or enriching uranium again, wanna get back into the deal? No? Alright, well inspectors are no longer allowed in our enrichment facilities, wanna get in the deal now? No? Well we're certainly gonna get very close to being able to build a nuclear weapon, and uh, you interested yet? You sure? If we tried to make a nuke, matter of weeks. S still no? Alright. We're going to keep enriching uranium and we're going to keep researching things and lowering that breakaway time shorter and shorter until we eventually either end up with a deal or a nuke. Here's hoping it's a deal. While nothing is currently scheduled as far as Iran talks, it's predicted that a new round of nuclear talks will be announced when Biden's Middle East trip is concluded. Now the reason for that prediction? Another pretty key date's coming up that is not great. A key meeting of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty members convenes next month in New York. Now Iran is threatened to leave that bedrock bargain, which aims to limit the spread of nuclear weapons in return for access to atomic technologies, should the Iranian nuclear weapons talks fail which would result in Iran being referred back to the United Nations Security Council for more sanctions. So basically, if Iran pulls out of the non-proliferation treaty, which they might do, that would plant them firmly on Europe's naughty list again, Europe being the main continent that's currently trying to keep this Iran deal together. So with Europe potentially eyeing the emergency exit to the Iran deal now, we're going to be back to 2015 again, right? Yay! 2015 being the year when the world looked at the prospect of a nuclear Iran and said, yikes, can't have that happen, we're all going to come together to sanction them back to the stone age or until they sign on to the JCPOA or Iran deal. Well, it's not exactly back to 2815 because there's one new country that's entered the conversation, Russia. Remember how Russia was the country in charge of collecting all of Iran's enriched uranium after they signed on to the Iran deal? Well, Russia, they're a pretty major player in all these negotiations. This time around though, they don't seem as excited to be working with America and Europe to put limits on Iran. More specifically, it looks like suddenly something about sanctioning a country into submission doesn't really seem to click with Putin's goals. Russia brings a completely different perspective to the Iran deal negotiations. You see, they want exactly, exactly what the Iran deal was offering, word for word, trade with Iran. Now that all sounds simple and doable enough. How could it go wrong? Well, Russia's looking at all this, arguing, West, you're sanctioning our imports and exports with everyone. If we restart this deal, Russia will not be able to do trade with Iran, not because of the sanctions against Iran, but because of the sanctions against Russia, and Russian sanctions for Iranian trade so we can trade with them under the Iran deal, otherwise we can't support this deal. Now America and Europe has shut this proposal down immediately. Significantly though, Russia is in the background right now with Iran working to create a trade system to circumvent western sanctions. We're both operating outside the system, let's do it together. The enemy of my enemy, my friend. So there you have it. Currently going on, Biden is circling the wagons of his friends, some of who are really jonesing for a fight with Iran. Iran negotiations are ongoing, nothing's been announced but looks like they're going to keep going, and we can't really verify the progress of Iran's nuclear program. And also we're negotiating the same three problems over and over and over again. 
And in the background, Iran and Russia are starting to work outside of the sanction system to create their own trade system, severely undercutting the sanctions that America and the West are putting on to prevent a nuclear Iran. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, be sure to join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on the link in the description. Also remember to leave a thumbs up if you liked what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.